time has come for us to outrun a potential hurricane. We really have no idea where exactly we're going tomorrow. We're just getting out of here. At this point, we didn't know the direction the storm was heading, but forecast showed it was curving north, up the Eastern Caribbean islands as it intensified. Good morning. It is 5.30. It's a very calm morning this morning, which is nice. We shall be underway here within the next, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Get on our way. Copy that. It's like 2 p.m. on Monday, and we have eaten very little. We each had about three hard-boiled eggs and some crackers, just something to keep in our stomachs. We haven't really wanted to go down below much, so we haven't brushed our teeth, washed our face. Like, it's just the reality of how things have been right now. The wind completely died, so we are motoring again, and Tanner is dodging sargasm because it's just, for some reason, where we are in it's a vast freaking ocean. But the sargasm finds us like everywhere we are. I'll give Tanner a break here in a second. I was trying to nap. I told Tanner I made us a sail. That's why we're going that's why we're going up another half knot. This this little guy. We are on that lean, going about six knots, <laughs> pinging on. Hang on. We are tipping over pretty well here. I'm trying not to fall in or get any of my pillows fall in. We laid down together for what felt like would be a peaceful moment in this building sea state, until we were startled by a loud thud that had us questioning if we had just hit something big followed by a huge rush of water covering the entire deck of the boat and soaking us and our bimini. 
We just took a huge wave over the bow. It completely came all the way into the cockpit, flooded the cockpit, so I'm a little bit, just I'm a little shooken up right now. We're trying to figure out the next best course of action. And they just started growing like this out of nowhere. And um, now we're soaking wet, so it's hard to walk around. We're slipping all over the place. We really need our boots. Basically, it just caught us completely off guard. The wave was so big that it buried we're, we have a 42 foot boat and it came all the way over the bow, drenched the bimini and the cockpit. It was one of the craziest experiences. I've had them come over into our cockpit from the side many times, but this one was like, not something you see every day, every time you go out sailing. So we're not stoked. We just, at this point, can't believe we're doing this another, you know, 36 hours or whatever it is. We just want to get there so badly. It's really freaking shakes you up. My poor book I was reading got soaked. I hope it's salvageable because I really like it. I just started it today. Ay, ay, ay. This was a special moment for us. We hadn't seen dolphins on a passage since the Bahamas, and these little guys swam alongside us for what felt like forever. They came around right after a difficult phone call with family back home who we miss dearly. It's amazing how much they can lift your spirits. We changed our heading and we're getting a little closer in towards St. Lucia. Sorry, I'm so breathy, I'm a little seasick. Um, closer to St. Lucia and that should help a little bit with the way these seas are because gusts are about to pick up around in the next two hours they'll be probably around like 30 knot gusts and it might be a little wet so <laughs> last night you gotta make it's gotta be one for the books right you gotta go out with a bang we just can't freaking wait to get there oh my god and even when we get there we don't know what that's gonna be like <laughs> But at least we're going to be in an anchorage and not out here on the sea. So we'll be thankful for that. We got a great captain. Very nervous and hasn't really wanted to be on camera a whole lot this trip because he's got a lot of stressors put on him and uh, he's making a lot of tough calls. So we love him. Once we were closer in, utilizing the protection from the islands, Tanner loaded us up on fuel in preparation for what looked like a rough evening. Did I mention it would be a rough night? How are we doing? Well. Soaked. Everything soaked. It's just ripping. Absolutely ripping. Max gust. Look at that. Honestly, it was pretty brutal. Not the easiest footage for us to gather either. But with daylight showing its face and St. Vincent Island coming into view, we could see the light at the end of this tunnel. Good morning from St. Vincent. This has been one hell of an evening. We had pretty rough passage coming down and then last night just totally kicked us in the ass. Two huge squalls, above 30 knot gusts, 30 to 35, just blowing. We had a sliver of jib out and a double reefed main. Seemed to do fine, we just released the sheet. Not released it, but let some out. It was a rough night. We made it. Some hardcore sailing, to be completely honest. And shout out to like the other 15 boats that were coming through that pass with us. This is a beautiful place and super calm. 
decided to go get into our anchorage and get locked down. Galloping along. Okay, so we do this every passage when we're almost done. What kind of food have you been dreaming about? Philly. <laughs> A Philly? What would be on your Philly? Everything. <laughs> American cheese. Delicious Philly cheesecake. White American cheese. Ooh. Banana peppers. Yes. Sauteed bell peppers. No mushrooms? No Too much. Mushrooms. Sure, why not, right? A delicious fresh roll some kind of roll yeah Italian urban cheese roll ah, talk dirty to me Getting us extra secure for this weather. Letting out a lot of chain and a lot of road and double snubber and all the things. I don't even know where the anchor is. That way. I dove the anchor, but it was to, basically I didn't help the situation at all. The water was very murky. It's been raining a lot and it's windy. So we're gonna try that again. First thing in the morning, I still feel like it's secure. We have our snubbers out and Tanner did a really good job with, you know, all of that, setting the anchor and making sure our snubbers are like basically perfect. So we're hoping that all of our efforts are going to help us in this situation because we've been checking the weather and it looks as though the storm has strengthened and it's definitely going to come this way as of right now so we're going to do our best we're going to raise the dinghy right now and put the outboard motor mounted and try to not stress about this too much this evening already seeing the outer bands just pouring rain Getting some of that action. We're gonna go finish securing the anchor, prep a second one, and triple snub our anchor at the moment. I'm just doing a safety snubber in addition to our beefy snubber, and then I'm putting just a last resort safety catch snubber right in front of the windlass just in case we went overboard got three snubber things going on got this one this one which is our backup and then the main bridle both sides howdy spreading some raw new love you know <laughs> Our friends came by to say hello before the storm left us stranded on our boats. They helped us untangle a twisted snubber line while they were over. What are friends for? Thanks guys. So we have just tightened the furling line. I went and undid the knot at the front and pulled more furling line around it so it's tensioned a little bit more. So that if, we do, if it does start trying to unfurl itself, I can pull it back in. I still have a little bit of length left. I also wrapped it as many times as I could and had to add extra line so that it was secure. So then I took our spinnaker halyard and I took it and wrapped that around the furler as well so that it stays secure. So it's got extra wrapping additionally, extra furling line, and it's wrapped with the spinnaker halyard. And then I wrapped our sail bag with a line as well um, in addition to just strapping it down. So yeah. Should be good there. We're going to get our second anchor ready to be dropped in case we do need to. It's a Bruce anchor. We don't use it. Actually, we've never used it, but having a second anchor secure for a storm like this is just smart. Look at this weather already. Be 
beginning of the day and it looks so ominous. We've got the calm before the storm right now. It is blowing five knots and pretty calm. Um, hopefully it stays this way and we just don't see any craziness, but I have high doubts of that. But we're gonna be hopeful, you know? But you have high doubts. <laughs> I've just been right here. <laughs> I was editing, but some of the rolliness makes me a little squeezy. So I got my patches on both sides. And I'm just resting for a moment to not get seasick on my anchored boat. Look at this kid. He's so tanny. Oh my god. Wait, you know how to drive the outboard? He's ripping it. Little kids ripping it. We're as good as we're gonna be at the moment. It's coming. I think we have I don't know, an hour or so before we start seeing it, and then overnight it's gonna be the worst. Mm. But I think we have the best spot in the anchorage as far as protection for where the strongest of the winds are gonna come from. Wow. The beginning's gonna suck though because we got wind coming straight in the harbor. It just it's spinning so I'm, at some point it's gonna clock around to where we're at for a couple hours and then should shift all the way around and the heaviest winds will start blowing and we have this giant mountain behind us. I don't even think you can see the sky it's so tall. Yeah. So it should be offer some really good protection and we're the furthest boat closest to it so we got a good spot. Um, Tanner just pulled, woke me up um, a second ago because the wind is really lively. So he turned the engine on um, so that we can put the boat in reverse. Oh, put the boat in forward so that we can try to counteract with the wind pulling at our anchor. And I'm just trying to wake up and adjust to all this craziness. Just doing some preventative measures. Got the engine on just in case we start dragging. Also just pushing the chain up so that we don't because these swells are pretty big. Wind's died, so we're waiting for it to shift and start blowing real hard out of the south, southeast. But at the meantime, we're just a cork in the ocean, just bobbing and weaving. And slowly we'll be broadsided by some waves, so it's just gonna be great. Playing some rail-to-rail -rail combat. downpouring and bucketing rain outside and I'm exhausted and the boat's rocking. Oh. Took a little power nap and woke up to what 20 to 25 knot sustained 25 to 30 gusting um, and heavy downpour of rain so that was exciting it kept us on high alert I just 
turn the engine on real quick just in case it started picking up even further. Um, just shut it back down so that we could uh, listen and pay attention and for our sanity. The swells have mellowed out. The swells have mellowed out quite a bit. I just woke up. I got about four hours of sleep though. Like Besides the fact that I slept under the liquor cabinet and I kept thinking that it was going to bust open and all the bottles were going to fall on my head. <laughs> I had an interesting sleep because of that. <laughs> but other than that, I'm happy that I got some. For sure. Yeah, we're not um, rocking and rolling anymore, so that's wonderful. Just some strong winds on the bow. Keeps kind of pushing us to the beam and broadsiding us. But yeah. it's doing a pretty good job overall. It's I think it's just snagging one side of the bridle and not or the other. What? It's good that it's, it helps that the light's out now because I feel like it's just a little more easier to manage anything when it's light out and not so, you know, pitch black. In the end, dude. Let's do about 15 to 20. I promise steak and eggs in a couple hours. We didn't eat dinner. Well, you ate dinner, but I didn't. My stomach was not loving, loving this sitch that we're in. So now I'm a little bit awake, and the first thing I'm thinking about is that there is a steak defrosted in the fridge. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> if you have the time to think about your next meal, the, the hurricane or storm you're in can't be that bad. So I'm very thankful. Right as the wind picks up. <laughs> He's like, the wind is like, excuse me? You're preparing for dinner or for breakfast? And I don't think so. <laughs> Not until I give you one of these. <laughs> Just want to say last night was rough. It was super, super chill for most of the night. And I don't mean it was calm, like dead calm. It was awesome. It's like I hope it stays like this all night and then as soon as the eye wall came right over it just everything just picked up the storm surge and waves just started pouring in here wind just started blasting like it was just nuts <laughs> yeah we're just rocking like a rodeo clown like it was just absolutely ridiculous for a break, it's just not letting up. Lost a little bit of our bimini. Granted, we probably should have taken all of that down, but I mean, I would have liked to be able to go in the cockpit without getting just drenched. job of sustaining about 30 right now with gusts. I haven't checked the gusts yet, but I don't know if I want to look at the max gusts, to be honest. It's got us heeled completely over when the boat, boat swings, because the boat's kind of just swinging back and forth, and when it swings on the beam and then the uh, wind catches it, it just throws the boat right over. Helm, one's on deck. Staying positive. Really proud of our ground tackle right now. Uh, she's holding strong. And uh, really happy about that. <laughs> I haven't really lost anything quite yet on the boat, but we're, our bimini is starting to rip up. Not rip, but come out of the zippers. This has been a problem area for a while. It'll start ripping, and then once it rips, it just opens. It does that with normal wind, so I fully expected it to rip off like that. Uh, I would have been shocked if it didn't. Straight heel, though. How are you doing? Good. What are you doing? 
sweeties. But I'm good. My hands are shaking, I don't know why. I haven't eaten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no oh. food, no drink. Drink some water, babe. I'm trying to drink water, but. Drink water. Oh. So tired. Had to tie the wheel down with this dock line because the brake on our um, our, wheel, our wheel lock broke. So yeah, it's just the dock line attached so that it keeps the, the rudder straight so we don't flop all over the place. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, looks hot. Mm. Getting gustier and gustier. Check it. Right now it's 13, but or 22, sorry. 41. The maximum. Gotta love it. It's calmed down a lot. It's about level 1, 15 to 20 now. Hoping it stays that way. Just went and checked some stuff on deck. Everything looks just seems to be in order. There's only a couple of small things that happened, nothing major, nothing even really of that concern. Just the port light leaking is still... What? I said just the port lights leaking and stuff. Lord. Yeah, we did find some leaks actually. This hatch leaks. Mm -hmm. These port lights leak. They're all over the set to you. They're closed. One in the head leaks pretty bad. Set to you. Oh. Um, this one actually did a fantastic job. This is the one in that previous video that was just gushing water. So I'm proud of this one. This one's a disaster. Leaking. This hatch leaks, so that's great. I have to rebed all of our hatches. Um, and then this one leaks as well. This little mini one above the bed is leaking. Put a towel down because I do not want my bed to get wet. This one as well leaks, so that's just grand. Leaky, everything leaks. Um, nothing major though, but we made it. We made it. Didn't budge one single inch. Super proud of our ground tackle, super proud of our boat. Did a great job. And just like that, we lost our storm virginity. And I made the steak and eggs, if you were wondering. I'll leave it at this. I am so proud of Tanner. As a new captain with no prior sailing experience, he's managed to remain patient under pressure, welcome information from mentors, study everything, and most importantly, keep us safe. We've met others out here killing it as new captains as well. And I just have to say, it's not an easy job. It's a major responsibility. There's a lot at stake and you should be damn proud of yourselves.